So this first problem is a binomial situation where given this probability of 0.79 or 79 percent of people have health insurance. So the probability that all four out of four are going to have health insurance, one way to do it is say, well, here's the four people, one, two, three, four. The chances that this one has health, health insurance is 0.79 and this one needs to have health insurance so that's 0.79 and since it's and we multiply and then just do that for all four people and multiply 0.79 four times or another way to do it is say well the chances of having health insurance for one person is 0.79 and then do that four times in a row so we would have excuse me here we go all right point seventy nine raised to the fourth is thirty nine percent so you can either leave the decimal point thirty nine or say that's thirty nine percent and with this problem the probability the first card is a king and the second one is a queen well for the king the first card to be a king the chances of getting a king are well there's four kings out of 52 cards and means we multiply and then there's four queens but since the card was not replaced, the first card was not replaced, there's now 51 cards left. So that would be 4 out of 52 multiplied with 4 out of 51 and that is 0 0.006 or 0.6%. Point six, a little more than half a percent chance. Now, whenever asked these how many questions, these counting questions, one thing to do is ask, well, does order matter? So when a person plays five pieces of music, or five songs, whatever it is, does the order matter? So if they start with a Bach, is that different than starting with the Beatles? Yes, the order definitely does matter. So then what you could do is say, well, there's one, two, three, four, five songs. And when the person goes to choose the first song, there's five choices. And then there's four choices left. After that, there's only three choices and then two choices. And by the time they get to the end, there's only one choice, the last one. So you can multiply these yourself, or this is five factorial. And the calculator can do factorials. So you put the five first of all, and then right here under the math, move over to probability. And there it is, the fourth one. So 5 factorial is 120 different possibilities. For number 4, the library is going to be given these three books as a gift out of a group of 16 titles. Does the order matter? So when the person hands the librarian these three books, does the order that the three books are in matter? No. So order does not matter. And if order does not matter, then we've only got one way to do it, and that's using combinations. So out of 16, how many combinations are there of three books at a time? And so you can use the formula if you like, which is 16 factorial gets divided by the 3 factorial 
and then you subtract the two numbers, 13 factorial. Or you can have the calculator do it. You would say, start with the 16, again go to the math and probability, and there it is, the combinations. If it was something where order does matter, then we would be using permutations instead. So here the order does not matter, use combinations. So out of 16, choose three books. How many ways can that be done? 560. For the last one on this page, so 55% of the graduates get a job in their field. So you've got 55% or the P is 0.55. Then we've got N equals seven people. Find the probability that at least one gets a job in their field. So that means that we would need to do when X equals one person out of the seven or two out of the seven, three out of the seven, four out of the seven, five out of the seven, six out of the seven, or seven out of the seven, get a job in their field. Well, that's a lot of work to do all that, so I'm gonna do it a slightly different way. And that is use the complement rule and do one minus the opposite. And the great thing about this one is the opposite of at least one is none. Because if you don't have at least one, then you've got exactly none of them. All right, so this means that of the seven people, none of them are getting a job in their field. That means, well, the chances of not getting a job in your field is the opposite of this, or one minus this. So 55% do get a job in their field, then 45% don't get a job in their field. And it's actually none of them get a job, so all seven are not getting a job in their field. So I raise this to the seventh. So one minus a point 45, which is raised to the seventh. So 99.6% chance so either use the decimal or the percentage, 99.6% chance that at least one person would get a job in their field. And on to the second page. So 64.1% of people in Salinas are Latino and then if there's 10 people, what's the possibility all 10 are Latino? So again, you could write out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So write out little boxes or lines for the 10 people. And then the chances of each of them being Latino is going to be the same, 0.641. Or you can just say 0.641 to be Latino and then do that 10 times in a row. So a point six forty one, ten times in a row, the chances are 1.2%. So it's pretty unlikely. In fact, it would be very unusual if all 10 people randomly chosen were Latino. Only 1.2% chance. So find the probability that eight of the 10 would be Latino. So for this, we use the binomial formula, which says the probability that x equals eight people. Well, first of all, we need out of the 10 people, to find all the combinations of eight of them being Latino. And then take the probability of being Latino. And we've got eight, of <coughs> eight Latino people. And now we need to find out what's the chances of being not Latino. So one minus a 0.641 or a 359 is the chance of not being Latino.
and then there would be two of those people out of the 10. So now calculate this. So we need 10 and then combinations of eight people being Latino, that's 45. And then multiply that with a 0.641, that to get raised to the eighth, and a 0.359, which gets raised to the two. So it's a 16.5% chance. And now on to another counting problem. So with a license plate, it starts with a digit and there's 10 of those. Then there's three letters in a row. There's 26, 26, and 26 letters in the alphabet. And then three digits in a row. So 10, 10, 10, and then multiply all of this up. So we've got 10 was used four times and 26 was used three times. Wow, that's pretty big. So that's 17576000. One, two, three, four zeros. One, seven, five, seven, six. 175 million different license plates. So with this license plate, it starts with a three and then the TKY. So we know that the three and the T, the K and the Y are taken care of, but then these last three aren't known. So what are the possibilities? Well, since they're digits, it's 10 possibility for each. So 10 times 10 times 10 would be a thousand. So out of all of these 175 million, there would be a thousand of them that start three TKY. So then what percentage is that? Well, a thousand out of 175,760,000 is gonna be pretty tiny. So 1,000 divided by 175,760,000. So this is the calculator's way of writing scientific notation. So that's saying, take this decimal, move it to the left by six places, which means that it's going to be the decimal place and then five zeros and then the five, six, nine. On to the last problem, number eight. So <clears throat> find the probability of, <clears throat> excuse me, of drawing a king. So a king, there are four of out of the 52. Or means add the following. And then for a heart, well, there's 13 hearts out of 52 cards. Keep in mind, this is not like the and situation where this has to count down because you've taken one card out and not returned it. This probability is asking only about one card. Is it a king or is it a heart? So it's not as if we took one out, took a king out, and now we're looking to get a heart. It's an or situation. Now, there's another thing, and that is the king of hearts got counted in here and in here. So then we need to subtract the one king of hearts. So that's going to be 17 minus one, so that's 16 out of 52 
and 16 out of 52 is a 0 0.308. So 0 0.308 or 30.8% chance of getting a king or a heart. So that can help you out at the next poker tournament. In contrast to that, only slight contrast, what's the probability of getting a jack? So a jack is 4 out of 52. The or means plus, and then a 7. Well, there's four of them that are 7s out of 52. But then you have to consider the jack that is also a 7. Oh, wait, it, there is no such thing. Okay, good. So we don't have to do this part of subtracting. So that means that it's just 8 out of 52, which I guess is half as much as the last one. 8 out of 52 is 15.4%. And then two kings. So this is basically saying probability of a king and then a king. So the chances for the first one being a king are 4 out of 52. And means multiply. Then the second one. Well, we just took out a king. That means there's only three kings left. And since we took out a card, there's only... 51 cards left. So it's going to be 4 divided by 52 and 3 divided by 51. Very small chance of getting two kings in a row. About half a percent. That would be very, very unusual.